So a few months ago, I was asked to open, a, uh, to open this session on leading under pressure, and I can't imagine why. Uh, in fact, people are saying to me, wow, it seems like folks are really going after Planned Parenthood. And I try to remind them that Planned Parenthood actually began in controversy. This Friday actually marks 99 years since we started. And uh, <laughs> long before birth control was legal in America, Margaret Sanger and her sister Ethel opened up a, a storefront in Brooklyn where for 10 cents you could get a pamphlet about how to prevent an un unintended pregnancy. And from day one, women were lined up down the block, as you see, and with baby carriages. Uh, 10 days later, an undercover cop posing as a mother, does that sound familiar, um, busted Margaret and sent her to jail where she taught all of her fellow inmates about birth control and a movement was born. Uh, and so today, 99 years later, Planned Parenthood is a global movement for reproductive health care. 2.7 million patients come to us each year at nearly 700 health centers across the United States, and we provide birth control, cancer screenings, testing and treatment for sexually transmitted infections, annual exams, and yes, safe and legal abortion. Uh, our motto is care no matter what. And so my take on how to lead under pressure is you have to set your sights on the next decade and not on the next day. You can't get bogged down in every single crisis. You have to deal with the incoming, but you always have to focus uh, on moving ahead. And I think that's particularly true today. So we are, at the same time, we're battling efforts to restrict access to reproductive care and information. At Planned Parenthood, we are deeply investing in technology and in new healthcare opportunities for the future. So, Here's kind of how much reproductive health care actually uh, is part of everyday life in America. One in five women in this country has been to Planned Parenthood for health care, and pretty much every single one of them remembers the day she came to us. Uh, more than 95% of women who have, uh, in this country have used birth control, uh, and this is one of my favorite statistics. The average woman in America who wants to have children spends about five years trying to get pregnant or being pregnant, and she spends 30 years trying not to be pregnant. Now that is, we're talking about a lifetime of work. Uh, so when birth control was legalized 50 years ago, it actually changed everything for women. And then it's largely as a result of that that women are now half the undergraduates in the United States and nearly half the workforce. And constantly we've been investing in better medicine so that birth control keeps improving. Uh, today, women have all kinds of options, the pill, the patch, the ring, and with each new advance, Planned Parenthood health centers around the country provide these new options uh, to women. One of my favorite stories was just last month in Bloomberg News, which you may have seen, they reported um, that the FDA has just approved a $50 IUD that, is, that actually is work, works for up to three years. This is revolutionary uh, in this country. This new affordable IUD is like this generation's uh, birth control pill was to women 50 years ago. And we're now training clinicians all across the country so that it's available uh, for women. And so at the same time that Congress is voting to end the National Family Planning Program, it's important to remember they cannot uninvent an affordable IUD in America. Um, and so that is really, to me, what leading under pressure requires. It's looking beyond the day-to-day -day and radically imagining the future. So I'll give you one of my favorite uh, examples, and that is sex education. So information is more available now than ever before, even though our politics continues to lag behind. When I was growing up in Texas, um, in the fifth grade, and some of you may remember these days, uh, we were hauled into the auditorium to watch a movie called The Story of Menstruation. And flowers bloomed, and birds chirped, and eggs were fertilized as if by magic. And then they handed out a Kotex pamphlet that declared, you're a young lady now, and sent us back to class. Some of you must remember these days. And then later in high school, of course, it was the poor coaches who got stuck teaching sex education, which was a wildly uncomfortable hour for everybody involved. Unfortunately, today, the official sex education policy in the state of Texas is abstinence only. And it's working so well that Texas has the third highest teen pregnancy rate in the nation. But the good news is, 
you actually, if you're a young person, you don't have to live in ignorance anymore if you're in Texas or frankly anywhere in the world. Today, six million people a month can come to and do come to Planned Parenthood online to get information about everything from where to find the morning after pill to how birth control works in English and in Spanish. Uh, they can type in their zip code and find the closest Planned Parenthood health center anywhere in America. We're like the fandango of reproductive health care. And each month, thousands of young people text with us uh, in real time, like a young woman the other night. She texted, I'm a teenager and helpless, I'm really scared. And without ever having to get the words out of her mouth out loud, she texts with us at Planned Parenthood, and the truth is, she was in a very, very tough situation. She needed to see a doctor, and so we made her an appointment right away. And as we wrapped up our chat, we did what we always do, and we asked her if she had everything she needed, and she texted back, um, you have been a lifesaver. I think you've answered all my questions for now. Thanks, with a little smiley face emoticon, just like a teenager would do. But a couple of minutes later, she texted back, can I come back here if I have questions later on tonight? Just like millions of young people, she just needed someone to give her honest information or uh, a, a connect her to medical care, or maybe she just needed someone to let her know that she was gonna be okay. This is the amazing thing. Despite politics, we're at a 40-year low for teen pregnancy in the United States of America, and it is not because teens have become less interested in sex. It's because we built a world where they have better access to information and birth control. Um, yeah, I mean. And the cool thing is now, in most parts of America, you can actually book an appointment at Planned Parenthood on your mobile phone. And it's amazing. Uh, a lot of appointments are being made between midnight and 6 a.m. when sometimes birth control can just really be on your mind. And this is one of my favorite things. Video conferencing has radically transformed how healthcare is delivered. So last month, a woman in a remote Alaskan village in the Arctic Skyped with Planned Parenthood in Seattle, and five days later, a float plane delivered her health care, her birth control, all right? Uh, that's the possibility of the future. Um, and telemedicine, which has been used for years uh, to connect people to doctors, particularly in areas where they're scarce, we're now using it for reproductive health care. So I'm going to give you an example. In Iowa, a third of the population lives in rural areas. And so Planned Parenthood has pioneered now providing medication abortion via telemedicine. And so what this means is a woman in Cedar Rapids can go to a, a local health center and connect with a doctor in Des Moines through video, uh, have a consultation, and then have the prescription medication provided by the nurse there or the clinician in the room who then also does the clinical follow-up. Um, and so again, at the same time, Politicians all across the country are trying to end access to safe and legal abortion. Technology is actually leaping forward, and you just can't turn it back. But I think it's important to recognize that advances in medicine and technology, they're only going to take us so far. Um, I actually think to build a future where all people own their reproductive health care and decision making, we have to have a cultural revolution around sex and sexuality and gender in this country. And the good news is, young people are leading the way. Uh, for any of you who are parents, you know that young people are now living out loud, and topics that used to be taboo, um, gender identity and abortion, reproductive issues, are now everywhere online. They're in social media uh, and storytelling, Storytelling has radically changed the ability of everyone to have a public platform, and as far as I'm concerned, it's about time. These last few years, uh, spurred on especially by young women and reproductive justice leaders who refuse to be shamed or silenced, people have been coming forward to share their abortion stories on Facebook and on Twitter and in the media. Uh, and so when Cosmo, which is the most widely read women's magazine in the world, starts writing about women's abortion stories, and when Nicki Minaj, the most successful female rapper of all time, talks publicly about her experience, we are beginning to be part of the mainstream in America. Um, and on that, here's a simple fact. Three in 10 women in, abortion, in, in America have had an abortion. 
and I'm one of them. And as far as I'm concerned, that was a decision that I needed to make with my husband, and it wasn't the business of any politician uh, to make it for me. Um, And I, I, I just think it's time now that politicians quit shaming women who've made that decision and instead focus on what we can do to make sure that birth control is available to everyone in America and abortion remains safe and legal. Uh, it's interesting. I think this next generation, they're not shy about who they are and what they believe. They want to live their lives without judgment, and they want to shape the future. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, as you may know, I spent five hours in Washington, D.C. answering questions or trying to answer questions from a congressional uh, committee. Now, it was broadcast on C-SPAN, which is not exactly must-see TV, but somehow that hearing keeps getting replayed and replayed, and now it's been turned into GIFs and memes. And for the last couple of weeks, I've just been stopped everywhere, whether in the coffee shop or on the street, particularly by young people. And I was getting on the subway Friday night to go home in New York, and there was a young man sitting across from me. And before he got off the train, he said he couldn't resist asking for a picture, which is just kind of crazy. <laughs> His name is Zach. <laughs> and so later that night, Zach tweeted it out with a photo and said he stands with Planned Parenthood. And so it made me think about just getting back to our theme. I thought that hearing was about that day and about being in that moment and answering questions uh, from Congress, but it turned out it was really about Zach and thousands of young people like him who were following it um, online and taking action and who are now part of this movement. It was actually about building a whole generation of new generation of leaders and activists for the next decade. This next generation is so much more connected than any in history. Their lives are just bigger and they're more open to the world and they're paying attention and we need to invest in them. Because no matter how hard you try, you cannot unliberate an entire generation. They have the tools uh, to change the world, and they're going to do it, uh, whether we want them to or not. And as for me, I can't wait. Thank you very much.